Today's webinar will be about deploying machine learning models on AWS. We'll first go over some common problems and scenarios that companies face when deploying machine learning models. Some companies may have a machine learning model already, but they may lack sufficient infrastructure on premise to deploy it to scale for production level usage. They may also want to test models in a production level environment before fully relying on them. Maybe they want the new models to be deployed without the user really noticing, or they may want to deploy models in such a way that it makes it easy to take down old models without the risk of disrupting the production level application. You may also want to test a model in production with production data or have before having critical user activity rooted through it. I'll now go over one of our client case studies. We as Metaltoad helped guide one of our clients, SecureToad, to achieving their model deployment needs. SecureToad came to us with a custom machine learning model, which needed to be continually trained and redeployed. They also had a model that needed to scale to large levels of user activity, and they needed their data analysts to verify that the new models perform well against production data before a full production deploy. SecureToad's model is mission critical for its customers. SecureToad's aim with their model is to flag suspicious activity on their users' sites using an ML algorithm and their CloudFront logs. So it, it was of utmost importance to SecureToad that we can verify that newer models have improved and have stable performance on production data. They also needed a deployment strategy that lowers the risk of downtime for their customers. So how did we guide SecureToad through finding a solution to this problem? After consulting with SecureToad and understanding their current ML infrastructure and where they are positioned on their roadmap to having a very well-architected ML solution, we determined that scalable SageMaker endpoints and a shallow deployment strategy would be the optimal solution for their case. Now I will go over SageMaker endpoints and some common deployment strategies. SageMaker endpoints are AWS's service of choice when it comes to deploying machine learning models using AWS. Endpoints can be configured to have a number of different infrastructure options, which offer varying levels of compute and memory to meet the needs of your use case. The endpoints also have single digit millisecond overhead latency, which allows them to be used for real-time responses and applications. SageMaker also allows for different inference types if you have a large model, you can use what AWS calls asynchronous inference for long running processing times. Endpoints are also very cost effective. You can configure them to be serverless and scalable to meet your needs at peak activity while saving you money in periods of low activity. There are also built-in integrations or ML ops. You can build them into ML workflows and CDCI pipelines using CloudFormation. And finally, instances can provide you with some automatic deployment recommendations, which can help you find optimal instance type, count for whatever your needs are so that you can save money in the long run. SageMaker endpoints can be scalable, allowing you to pick minimum and maximum sizes, which allow you to support a consistent level of activity on your endpoint, but can also scale to large amounts of activity this auto scaling is fully managed by AWS. So the advantage of this is that you can save money when there are periods of low activity on your endpoint, and it can allow you to seamlessly scale to high levels of activity when that compute power is most needed. Endpoints come with multiple inference options. You have the choice of real-time inference, which provides you with low latency, high throughput, multi-model endpoints, and really allows you to seamlessly A-B test. And this is really well suited for applications that cannot afford to waste time scaling up to higher levels of activity. The next option is serverless inference, which is great for models that experience idle periods of traffic and can tolerate cold starts. Serverless automatically launches compute resources and scales them uh, based on your level of traffic. This option can be very cost-effective the next option is batch transform, which directs activity to your endpoint in batches. And this works really well for 
uh, job-based systems and when you're processing very large data sets. And finally, you have asynchronous inference, which is near real time and can support very large payloads and timeouts as well. SageMaker also offers Jumpstart, which is a service that can help you to find a model if you do not have one trained. Here you can browse a number of different pre-trained models, which you can easily deploy with SageMaker. You can also deploy your own custom trained models that you may be hosting on-premise within your own infrastructure. You can take what you have on-premise and store your algorithm's code on an AWS Alaska Elastic Container Registry image. Your trained models can be stored on an S3 bucket. And with the correct IAM role, you can pull that image and the model from S3 to deploy your custom models using SageMaker endpoints. Your journey towards deploying models on Amazon SageMaker does not end there. Next, you'll need a deployment strategy. In most cases, the instant you deploy a machine learning model to production, it needs to be retrained. The data that is being fed in drifts, the model drifts, the trends drift, and you need to train and deploy new models seamlessly to ensure model quality and to not disrupt production level activity on your site. So I'll be guiding us through the following deployment strategies. On larger data and ML teams, it is best practice to have your production level ML endpoint to be on a separate account from your data scientists or sandbox accounts, which are for experimentation. The strategy for this kind of deployment is called hub and spoke. The hub is the production level environment. The spokes are accounts for data scientists and for experimentation. When we find a model that is successful, we can push it up to production level environment for deployment. This keeps the production level infrastructure in an uninterrupted and secure space. SageMaker model registry also helps us keep track of model versions and where those models are stored in S3. The next deployment strategy is shadow deployment. In this scenario, you have a new machine learning model that you'd like to deploy to production. But you don't want an immediate cutover. You want to analyze the model's performance against production level data. So shadow deployment strategy involves deploying both models and routing production level data through both. One model endpoint interacts with the production level environment, while the other one only provides analytics for data scientists to analyze. So this can be used to determine whether the model performs well in production without routing all production level activity through it. Usually once a model has shown good performance on production data, you do a cutover to have the new model interact with your production level environment. In production, data scientists work to improve models in many different ways. They may be adjusting the data sets the model is trained on, or the hyperparameters. So A-B testing a new model, an old model with production level data is a really great way to validate a new ML model. SageMaker endpoints allow you to seamlessly deploy multiple models to a single endpoint, and you can allow them to distribute traffic across multiple production variants to test which one performs best. So in this example, you can specify the percentage of traffic being routed to each model by setting the variant weight. In this scenario, 60% of the traffic is being sent to variant one, while the other 40% is being sent to variant two. SageMaker endpoints also allow for easy blue-green deployment. In blue-green deployment, SageMaker provides two fleets of instances that your models are running on. The first fleet being the blue fleet, which is the old model. The second being the green fleet, which is the new model. SageMaker can shift traffic from the old fleet to the new one. Once the new fleet has been validated to perform well, SageMaker can then terminate that old fleet. So this deployment feature in SageMaker also comes with some different traffic shifting modes and automatic rollback monitoring. The first traffic shifting mode we have is all at once. So this shifts all of your traffic to the new model's fleet in a single step. Now the advantage to this approach is that this can greatly minimize the overall update duration. This can be very quick. 
The disadvantage is that this update immediately affects 100% of the traffic on your applic application. So if you want to minimize update time and cost, this, this is your best option. The second mode is Canary. So this mode shifts in two steps. First, a small portion of traffic is shifted to the new fleet. Then a second step shifts the remainder of that traffic to the new fleet. So the benefits of taking this approach is that it confines the risk of the deploy. So if you have a model that you aren't sure is going to perform as you'd like in production, you can test that the new fleet performs optimally before switching over all activity uh, to the new model. The disadvantage to this is that both fleets are operational, the entire deployment before the final cutover. So this option is best used when you want to minim minimize that potential risk of the deploy and minimizing the time both fleets are operational. The final mode is linear. So in this mode, a fixed portion of traffic switches to the green fleet in predefined number of equally spaced steps. So the advantage of this approach is that it minimizes the risk of the deploy uh, due to the incremental nature of the deploy. The disadvantage is that the update duration and cost can increase depending on the number of steps you use. So this approach is best used if you want to greatly minimize your risk with spreading out deployment across multiple steps. Now that we've learned more about SageMaker endpoints and deployment strategies, let's see how they were applied to SecureToad. Since SecureToad has intermittent activity based on the number of CloudFront logs that they're processing, we're using serverless and scalable endpoints to scale to large amounts of activity when SecureToad needs it most, and to be cost-effective when activity levels are low for their customers. For model deployment, we implemented a shadow deployment strategy, like I'd said before, that allows SecureToad data scientists to analyze a new model against production data before doing that full cut over to the new model. And next, I'll hand it over to Joaquin to talk about our proof of concept funding opportunity oh, yeah. with AWS. Great, thank you, Ray. Well, and it is indeed proof of concept uh, sponsored by AWS. So we have uh, AWS here, both Summit and Prachi here are from the AWS side. But what proof of concept funding is, is really what Amazon wants to do is encourage people to do machine learning. They want to encourage people to experiment um, with the guidance of a consulting partner like Metal Toad. So if you are working with a consulting partner like Metal Toad, that's somebody who's qualified, we're an AWS uh, consultancy, what we can do is we can put together a calculator, look at what the potential cost would be over a year long period. And what AWS will do is take 10% of that projected annual cost and write that as a check uh, for Metal Toad or your partner to essentially do that proof of concept building. Um, we've been doing this uh, a number of times for different customers. Uh, putting the uh, calculator together is free. So it is something that if you're interested in launching a proof of concept and you'd like to know what sort of funding you would qualify for, that's something we would be happy to, to help you with. But it's essentially free money. Uh, great move by AWS in, in terms of encouraging ML. Um, and that's it in a nutshell. All right, so we'll dive into some questions here. I have to see a few coming through the chat. If you have any, you feel free to type it in and we'll just go through them in order as long as we have some time here. Uh, so first up, uh, what are the security considerations when deploying machine learning models, especially in sensitive domains? Uh, Prachi, can you answer that one for us? Uh, yeah, sure. So basically the sensitive domains are like the finance or the healthcare. So there are of course the compliances. And so whatever other security aspects that I'm going to talk about in addition to that, the compliance regulations also need to be considered. Having said that, basically for uh, model deployments, what you need to do is you need to worry about the data security, the data on which the model is going to be trained. And then after uh, uh, um, uh, the trained model is uh, available for you, uh, or if you have your own model, which is going in the uh, registry directly, the security of that. Now, Amazon provides you the infrastructure to enable that security, say, using various roles and controls, um, uh, the policies, 
the IAM roles and IAM, uh, the API keys, etc. So you can use all of that for access control. Then um, the data that is going to come in when you are using the data for inferencing as well, and this needs to be done before sending the data to inferencing. But if there is any uh, data which say has PII or, or, or such other uh, information which is there uh, before it sends uh, it is sent to inferencing, you need to take care of that. If it is the data which is uh, uh, PII included data which is used for training, etc., then the data needs to be properly obfuscated. Um, proper logs need to be maintained so that um, uh, all the logging activity, in case there is any audit required, we can use those logs. Then uh, the updates uh, for the models uh, need to be very secured. So uh, there has to be a proper process when you are uh, looking at modeling, uh, updating the existing model, uh, which is like a, in addition to the deployment strategies, which were uh, right now explained in this call. So there are all such uh, considerations in all different stages of the model. Uh, I hope this answers the question. If you have any specific asks, feel free to put that on the chat. Thank you. Um, our next one, um, how do you decide which deployment strategy is suitable for a given use case? Uh, perhaps you want to answer that one as well? Yeah, sure. So um, it will depend on multiple things. So basically, what is the inferencing load that you have? If you want to have real-time inferencing, if the data that is going to come in uh, pretty much um, continuously, then the real-time inferencing is uh, something that you want to look at. If you want to go for asynchronous or batch, batch, as it says, it is it is for specific batch type of workloads, um, multiple inputs, but they are coming in different batches. Then you want to go for the batch one. The asynchronous is, again, real time, as it is explained. Uh, in addition to that, if you specifically go for uh, the serverless one, so serverless is like um, if you don't want to worry about the scaling of the infrastructure, I know there are auto scaling and all other aspects available, but if, if if you don't want to worry about managing any of that, then you want to go for serverless deployment. And if I want to actually talk about the deployment strategy, the AB, the canary or the shadow testing, personally, I would recommend the shadow testing one because it kind of uh, gives you something which without disturbing your current model, the shadow testing would, uh, uh, would help you understand how your new model uh, fares. But this is only if the current model is working very well for you. Now, in case if you want to have a new model, which is in answer to the data drift for the original model, et cetera, then all other deployment uh, strategies, uh, be it canary, be it linear, all those are going to come into picture. So essentially it depends on the use case. Uh, thank you. Uh, another question here is, how does learning from existing models shape the training of new models? Ray, can you walk us through that one? Yeah, I can walk this through, us through this one. And this one is really referring to um, a step in creating ML application, which is called model monitoring. So when you deploy a production level model, you're going to have a monitor which describes to you the performance of the model at a given time. And these metrics can be up to you as to what you're monitoring it for. Uh, but based on those insights, you can grasp whether either your model needs to be retuned or whether you need a more diverse data set. Maybe the data coming into your system has changed from the time since you trained your model. But basically these kind of insights you get from those, from those metrics guide your data scientists in the process of, okay, maybe I'll have to formulate a few different data sets to testify I'm lacking data diversity. Uh, so it's a very iterative process. It's not something that you do when um, your model is completely drifted away, but you'll see this trend over time uh, once you've deployed a model to production. Not seeing any other questions or anything happening. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope we'll see you all on um, at the end of September for our next uh, webinar. Thank you very much.